Are you aware of the benefits of planar texturing? If you're not, let me show you. So, say you've got a house and you've got a roof here, that, on the roof that goes on top of the house, and see, it's got a nasty sort of distortion. Ugh. Well, planar texturing is designed to prevent that sort of thing. If I right click and edit it, right here in the texture tab, you'll notice the two modes of mapping our default use in most objects, and in special cases like this, planar. So once I select planar, what happens is, it will change from repeats per face to repeats per meter. Think of it, and this was a great analogy from Chosen Few, it's like a projector projecting this image straight on, so it's good with flat surfaces like this. And as you can see, clearly, there's no distortion compared to this. And of course, you may have to adjust some of these other options in order to make the bricks a little bigger and to taste. And like I said earlier, it's most useful for flat surfaces. It may have other sorts of purposes, but you'll want to experiment to see what works best for you. Like for example, if I were to change this into a cylinder now, and then let me just untaper that, that looks really weird. If I were to make it a cylinder, notice that planar texturing, it looks kind of funky that way. And that's generally unpleasing. You could use it for surrealist art if you please. But in this case, I could switch it back to default and then I would increase the repeats per face. Let me see here. That would work better. And then that would look more correct. So again, it depends on your use and application. Special thanks to Runite Linden, Chosen Few, and Ravenel Zugzwang, my lovely wife, for your help.